So, how does my basic cider taste? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Brian. And I'm Derica, and you're watching City Studying. To learn and grow and brew, and to take control of your food, hit subscribe now. And don't forget to click that bell icon so you'll be the first to be notified when we have something new to share. So, if you remember a couple weeks ago, like on July 28th, is when I made it. Might have seen the video a little bit after that. We made a very basic hard apple cider, okay? Ooh, careful moving that there. So the bottom and stuff. Anyway, um, we made a basic cider that I'm going to link to right here. And if you haven't seen it, go watch it. This will make a lot more sense. This is just a pretty basic cider. It should come out to somewhere in 11 to 12 percent alcohol range. And um, what we're going to do today, we're going to take it out of its original fermentation vessel and put it into bottles. That's right. No racking, no nothing. This is simple. We want this to be very basic. And then you're going to see us taste it and we're going to give you tasting notes to let you know what we thought of it. Um, that's the basic procedure there. So let's just get to the racking, which is really bottling. Today. And then we'll test it, check its, its alcohol content and all that good stuff. Well, sugar content really. I just need this. Yep. And what you're going to do, you're going to hold that in the bottle. So we're using our smaller wrecking cane right now. Okay. Just put it about we're, halfway down. We're just putting it, as Brian said, about halfway down. And then on the end of this, I have a bottler, okay, that has the little floppy thing in there that when this hits the bottom of the bottle, liquid flows. But we have to get the siphon started first. So we're probably just going to pump this because I'm an idiot and didn't really prepare for this. You ready? Yeah, go. Make it, make it flow. And there isn't much here. We did ferment it right in the plastic bottle the apple juice came from, came in, because someone actually asked if you could do that, and it's a really cheap, inexpensive way to get into doing it. You mean you might need to go a little bit lower now. I don't expect to get a lot out of this. Maybe like two and a half bottles. That's about it. Keep going. Doing good. Stop for a moment. Don't go anywhere. Huh? You can already smell it. And you'll see there's some, some bubbles in here. It's what's called petalant. Um, I did not degas, so there might be a little bit of residual carbonation in there from the carbon dioxide that's built up over time. If I was to add some sugar to each of these bottles, I can actually carbonate this. I'm not doing it. I'm actually going to make a, I think a I'm still. I'm nearing the lease here. You're actually still okay for now. probably going to end up getting some um, sediment settling in these bottles over time. Yeah, you're getting sediment now. How far down do you want me to go with this? I can take care of it. Can so I can see it. Yeah. Yeah, you, we're going to end up disturbing some. But I don't want to waste it. It's a half gallon. should get at least two bottles out of it. Like we're going to get the full two bottles. Do you want me to tilt it? No, because then it'll just disturb the lease. It's okay. So we got a bottle and a half. That's all right. We're going to use this one for testing. And um, you can actually just let the rest sit. What's in the, the fermenter, you can let that sit. And eventually it will uh, settle out and you can redo this again. I know that was just a down and dirty, really sloppy way to rack. But it's okay. I'm sure somebody's going to have issue with it. You're going to put that in the sink for me. Um, but what we have is a bottle and a half of cider, and you can see this one on, in my left hand right here has a lot more of the sediment in it. This one's a lot more clear. So for testing, I'm actually going to use this one, and we'll just let this one sit for a while, even though this one's going to get drank first, because see all that extra headroom? We don't want that to oxidize. It'll turn into apple cider vinegar, which is not a bad thing, but not for this project. So next step, I'll pour some into a test tube here. No, I'm going to eyeball it and wing it like that. Looks pretty clear. Now keep in mind, this is three weeks old, so this is not... Do you want to switch places with me? You look you look anxious. I was trying to make you stupid. Mm, okay. So, 
I'm going to just give it a little twist here and there to get rid of some of those bubbles and then we're going to check its gravity. Now this started out <laughs> this started out at Derek is going to check because she just took the bottle away. 1.090 Okay, so it started out at 1090 and it's finishing up at whoa, it's going to be pretty dry uh, 0.993 Okay, so oh, something else this is my cell phone that has my ABV calculator on it. That's right! You'll notice I'm not using it for filming today. We have a brand new setup thanks to you who pointed out some of our audio issues and in researching our audio issues that led to another thing which led to another thing which led to another thing as is often the case with technological devices. Three thousand dollars later here we are. So if you are um, liking and following us on Facebook um, that's city setting on Facebook you will know that I promised you some chicken videos and it's the new setup that has caused a bit of delay on finishing the chicken videos we have one more part because as you know there's always one more part to get to finish your setup and once that part arrives I promise we'll get right on those chicken videos for you for those who wish to know 1090 starting gravity going to 0.993 finishing gravity is 12.7 percent alcohol so this is pretty strong apple cider. Um, I, I will be honest, I don't really have high hopes for how this tastes because it's very green and very young and I just don't trust that it's going to be wonderful at this point. Uh, for now though, I am going to pour this back into this bottle carefully because I should be using a funnel and I'm not. Steady hands though, look at that. Alright, there we go. And we're going to switch over, have a seat, relax, and do the tasting part of this video. And just like that, we're ready for the tasting. So, we, uh, we want to come up with a more metho methodological, yeah, um, a method of approaching the tastings, okay? Because we're going to be doing a lot of tastings, and we thought... You know, going with appearance, aroma, and taste, and talking about like what other flavors we're picking up because we both like to drink the alcohol, <laughs> and we like various kinds. Like I'm very into whiskey, as you can probably tell, and I t I use a lot of the knowledge that I learned from tasting whiskey to taste other alcohols, and you can get different flavors because of the esters and alcohols that are in something than what you might have actually intended. I know that made no sense at all, but anyway, we're gonna taste this. So first appearance it's not you know it's three weeks old um it's pretty clear for three weeks yeah if this sat for another couple months this is going to be crystal clear but right now this is a really nice looking apple wine and as i'm swirling it you get what's called legs okay and that's the sugars left in it you can see eh they're they're not more they're more like tree trunks than legs it's not really legs it, it's there's some sugar in here, but it's not tremendously strong. This is going to be very dry. I, I don't understand the tree trunk analogy, but what I think They're he was really trying thick. to say is that it's it leaves a uh, a line when you swirl it in your glass rather than streaky things. That's what I mean. Um, but it doesn't seem to be. It's over, a mountain. It's not overly thick. Yeah. So if you're getting that is an overly thick amount, no, it's not. Okay, that works. Smell. Okay, so before we make any comments about the smell, I want to reiterate how young this cider is. Three, it's 23 days from the day it was made today, so which is not much. So that is something to note because the younger, the quicker the process, the um, more likely there's going to be offsetting aromas because it hasn't had time to release the chemicals and the gases that are created in the process of making the cider. That said, when I first smelled it, there was a really strong that hydrogen sulfide smell that you get. The I call it it's almost like a a grapefruit smell. Brian attributes it, eh, attributes it to grapefruit because he does not like grapefruit. like grapefruit. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later when we get to the taste. There's a a lot of things that your brain does 
for you when you're trying to label the scent or the taste of something that's unfamiliar to you. Your brain is going to try to connect it to a memory. Mm -hmm. um, and so for Brian, it is an unpleasant odor. So he's connecting an unpleasant memory. And for him, that's grapefruit. By um, the way, to really know something, you want a glass that funnels to the top. You yeah. want to swirl it a little bit to get some of those vapors to kind of whirlpool up. And you want to stick your nose right in there and take a couple of sharp sniffs. Just go. And if it's too alcoholic for you, you're going to know it right away. Your eyes are going to water. Yeah. Back off. Give it a couple seconds and try again. Um, but if you do this enough and you stop and you let it breathe and then you come back and you try it again, notice we haven't tasted it yet. I'm getting different scents off of this already, though. At first, it was very grapefruity to me. Now, I'm, getting, I'm re really getting a sweet fruit off of it. I'm, I'm getting apple. The apple is coming through. It's more like a green apple. Even yes. though this is from yes. a juice, it's just a juice. So it could have been green, it could have been red, who knows what kind of apples it was. But it's definitely green apple to me. The, the grapefruit smell is actually kind of going away now. I'm, I'm getting more of a green apple. And that's another thing that your brain and nose and the connections are going to do. It's similar to um, sight. If you stare at something of one particular color for a long period of time, your rods and cones, I'm sure you've heard about this, get messed up and they try to put in the colors that don't exist there. Yeah, your smell um, will do that too. So and get when we're smelling this, the scent that we don't like, we're, we're going to get adjusted to that and we're going to be able to smell past that into things that are more pleasant. I can definitely smell the alcohol too. Um, this is almost 13% alcohol. This is pretty strong. This is this is apple wine. A lot of people would say this isn't even cider. Legally, it's apple wine because of the high al alcohol content, but it's still technically cider because it's made from apples. So whatever you want to call it, it's what it is. You probably noticed if you've been watching our videos that we're not overly nitpicky about specific labels. And to some people that's insulting and that's by no means our intent. Yeah, we're not scientists. Um, so yes, we understand that this is a higher percentage um, of alcohol content for what is legally termed as cider. So it, it would be technically uh, apple wine. It's starting to smell good. But <laughs> we're calling it a cider and Again, we don't mean any offense to people who are really into cider. Can we just taste this now? Yes, we can. Let's go. Let's go. That was really interesting. I wasn't expecting to get sweetness up front from the ABV that this went to and the this specific went to gravity. Nine, nine, two? Yeah, but that's the, really dry. The very, very, very first thing I got was sweetness. Sweet, and then immediately it went to the alcohol. Yeah, flavor. Slight bitterness on the finish. Yeah. However, I'm gonna say it again. This is good for three weeks old. It shouldn't taste this good. It, it, <laughs> it shouldn't. Really shouldn't. It shouldn't. This... I was expecting this to be gross. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I was expecting to have to m mimic pleasant facial expressions for you so that you weren't going like, what the heck are they drinking? But this is surprisingly good to if something you this like young. like white wine, dry white wine, um, like a Pinot Grigio or something like that, you're gonna love this. Cause that's almost what this tastes like with a little bit of an apple flavor to it. But man, this came out really good. But for something this dry, it's- And this high alcohol, it's this It's surprisingly young. fruity, it's surprisingly that I still get that very first sweet note, um, which I prefer things that are sweet, so that's, that's a very pleasant thing for me. Uh, another thing I'd like to say that goes with the memory is prior to this recording, I made it a lovely salad with Brian's <laughs> incredibly delicious ham. I cubed it up and put it on top of the, the lettuce and the greens. It's gone now. It, the ham is gone. We're very sad because it was so oh, incredibly good. That one came out. Um, so make sure to click that card if you the haven't seen it yet that video. and check out the ham because it was really good. Um, but that taste, that residual taste and the memories of that taste that are so new to me, still fresh, are going to affect how my brain is sure. figuring what it's the tastes relative. are in this. So you may find that you have a really rich 
Italian meal and drink a wine with that meal and it's just wonderful and the pairing is perfect for you and you might remember oh that wine was really good and then try to have that wine by itself at a different date and you might not like it as well because the plays between the different flavors were creating something greater than the parts. Like what she's saying is don't have this after having a big piece of chocolate cake. <laughs> Not yeah, taste you probably good. won't get that initial sweetness because the cake. Relative. You know, yeah. No. This is not a sweet cider. Okay, that's one thing I want to make clear. It's not a sweet cider. It's actually a very dry cider. The sweetness is surprising, though. It means that the juice that I used, Ali, was a good quality juice to begin with. Otherwise, this would not taste this good this soon. Okay, because when the fermentation process creates some things that aren't real helpful to flavor. Apples have a ton of malic acid. Malic acid is that sharp, harsh flavor that you get in ciders a lot of time. Over time, that'll do a malolactic fermentation. It'll turn all the malic acid into lactic acid, which is a softer, smoother, easier to take. And it's almost a sweet taste in a fruity beverage. Yeah. So once that happens, and that usually takes months, this has not done it, it changes the cider. That's why you'll hear people aging ciders, aging wines, aging meats. That's why you're aging them. You're trying to induce that malolactic fermentation and soften off some of the acid and things like that. I assumed this was going to be super high acid, really harsh to taste, and it's not at all. It's nice and crisp and refreshing. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Oh, something about tasting. Um, there's different ways of doing it. What I like to do when I'm tasting something lower alcohol like this is I put some in my mouth and leave it there, let it float over my tongue, around my mouth, and I get all the different flavors that it has. Then I swallow, the next sip is just a full sip. Now when I do whiskey, I do the opposite. I do a quick sip, then I let it hit my tongue because whiskey has that higher alcohol content. So if I let that sit, it'll burn out my taste buds. I wouldn't taste anything the second taste. So by kind of attuning your tongue to it a little bit, and swallowing quick, you can then get flavors in the second gulp that you didn't get in the first one. But with lower alcohol stuff, it's not as critical. And I like to do the long taste and then a short taste because sometimes the finish doesn't happen in a short taste, but it does in a long taste and th things like that. You'll find your own way. Um, and we're probably talking way too much about how to taste something that's this simple, but it's important. And it's good to know this stuff so that way you can appreciate things that you may have not thought about before. Um, and when you're when you're taking the time to brew your own stuff, you want to be able to appreciate every aspect of it. And we encourage you to take your time with your brews and to really enjoy them. Um, as far as this one goes, it was surprisingly wonderful straight out of the bottle. But does it have room for improvement? Of course it does. Because we got a decent amount of alcohol in this, that gives us some area for back sweetening where we can lower that ABV just slightly and get a, um, a more pleasing I'd actually like taste. I'd actually like to say a couple things. This is nice, but it could be a lot better, like she said. And there's ways to make it better. Back sweetening is one. I, I'm even thinking I could add some acid to this, a little brightness, a little lemon juice or orange juice would really brighten this up, make it taste a lot better. And I'm even thinking a slight tannic aspect, like maybe I can put a, a leaf from a raspberry or, or something in this. Just a, you need a little bit of mouthfeel. It's kind of thin. Um, it's a little bit watery. It's certainly drinkable. I mean, you, you know, we're we're being incredibly nitpicky here. Yeah, it just reminds me of something you'd want to drink in the summer because it is that light. Yeah, we're drinking at warm room temperature, so it's like 72 degrees probably. Um, actually, it's probably more 75 in here, uh, and it's quite pleasant. If you chilled this, it would be wonderful. If you let this sit for another month or two and have that malolactic fermentation happen, this would probably be seriously incredible apple wine, yeah. um, which I just might do. I don't know. I, I always come up with all these ideas. I didn't actually have a backup for what to do with this one. I just thought I'm going to make cider and see what goes. It was basically an experiment to um, show the person, I'm sorry, I forget who yeah, it, I don't was, who it was, um, well. who asked if you could if you could ferment something in its original vessel. And the answer is yes. And you can make it really good too. So thank you so much for watching. We're really glad that you're here and we hope to see you again soon. Take care, guys. Hey, everybody. If you want to learn to grow and brew and take control of your food, don't forget to hit the subscribe icon down below and hit the little bell next to it. That way you get notified of everything we do.